the Grammy was uh, for recording an album with a uh, Kora player from Mali named Mamadou Chibati. The album was called Duga Manza. Um, I had worked with Mamadou on a previous solo album, I think that was 2007, um, which got nominated for a Grammy, um, but was squarely beaten by uh, another project that was done by his cousin, Tumani Jabati, um, and Ali Farkature, and, uh, which was an astonishing record. Mamadou obviously feels comfortable working with me because he, he drove up from Asheville uh, to do his second record with me. He didn't want to record with anyone else. I, uh, without having had any experience recording Cora, apparently gave him what he considered to be the best sounding Cora recording he's ever heard. I think the fact that I hadn't heard a Cora before probably helped me because I was in that place of absolute discovery, you know, where I'm just walking around watching this gigantic man play this strange instrument and these amazing sounds are coming out in every direction. And I got to try to figure out, okay, what what is this instrument? Where does the sound, what is the sound of it? What is its essence? How do I capture this? So I used two omnidirectional microphones and just found a place where it all focused. So anyway, he comes back for the second record, and an interesting thing happened. This, and it's an important part of the story because it's a big life lesson for me. Um, on the first record, he had a booking agent and a producer who were encouraging him to sort of westernize some of the tunings and stuff on the first record. He didn't feel great about it, but he's got a wife and a kid and needs to earn money, and so made a concession to bring things a little bit into harmonic zone that Americans can digest. And uh, But the second record, he comes back to me, says he's fired his booking agent, he's fired his manager, and um, that he has grown to have misgivings about having kind of sold out on the first record and he wanted this next record to uh, be in the voice of his father's 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 fathers. So he, he comes in and he, we set up the way we did before and he warms up a little bit and then in an evening records his album um, and the tunes sound, they're a little, little more challenging to listen to. You can tell that they weren't sort of safe and packaged. Um, but they're way more interesting. They took you into different places. Um, and uh, I think he might have re-recorded one song the second night. But that album had no editing, uh, no added reverb, no EQ. It was so completely pure. Um, me just like letting him do what he does and capturing what he did. Uh, and then... Uh, I'm listening, I'm on, on the internet, and I'm reading news feeds about something, and somehow I stumble upon the fact that Mamadou's album has won the Grammy. And I shout, no effing way, as loud as I can. It's like 11 o'clock at night, right? Susan, I hear the bedroom door open. Susan opens the door, she says, what's the matter, what's the matter? She says, Mamadou's album won a flipping Grammy. And she's like, awesome, now come up to bed. Um, and so I ended up talking to Mamadou the next day. And Mamadou is usually a pretty reserved guy. He's like bouncing off the walls, right? He's getting calls from embassies. You know, this is like a big, like a national holiday in Mali. And, and what he said to me, he says, I was true to myself. I was true to myself. I didn't sell out on this one. And look what happened. And I got really teary about it. Because the big lesson, of course, is, is you know, it gets told in, various different contexts, but the whole thing of being true to yourself and knowing who you are and respecting your tradition. Um, and it's a, it's kind of fairy tale that that's the one that won the, the award. You know, it's like he got acknowledged for being who he was instead of who people thought he should be.